Praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to our midweek session of morning prayer and devotion on this Wednesday morning. I'm so delighted to be a part of this great prayer ministry with each of you. We are a team, and together we are accomplishing great things for the kingdom of God. No matter how unheralded uh, these works of prayer may be, we know that we're making a difference in the spirit realm today. I'm glad to report to you that there were seven more COVID recoveries in our county here in Stoddard County yesterday afternoon. Uh, Brother Ben Ramey reports that Kelly Williams is doing better. She's been battling COVID, and this is his uh, brother's fiance, and we're thankful to hear the report that she is on the mend. In our prayer request today, let's keep praying for all these spiritual needs and call these names before the Lord faithfully each morning. Jamie Dixon, Connor, Haley, Evie, Rose, and Carl, Jennifer and Brenda's family, Sylvia's family, Marsha Moore's children and granddaughter, Pam Pulliam's children, Lori Arbo's mother, Peggy Fiedler's children, Debbie's daughter, Jamie and family, Josiah, Mark and Caitlin, Art Chandler, Tasha Ray's husband Adam and sister Heather, Terry Adams' children, Barbara Owens, Carmen's daughter Grace, Beulah's family, Judy and Mike Williams' daughter Jennifer, Debbie Biddick's niece, who needs salvation and also has many health issues. And let's continue remembering all those who are struggling with their mental health today, that God would heal wounded spirits and touch minds today that are troubled we have a prayer request today, new request for Debbie Biddick's friend Shirley, who has major kidney issues and needs healing today. We want to pray for strength and comfort for Chris Rogers' co-worker Judy, who lost her mom on Sunday, and the children of Pastor Kenny Comstock and his wife Melissa, who perished in a car accident this past weekend. Let's continue praying for Sally Waller's two daughters who are expecting that they would have safe pregnancies and deliveries, and also Beth Wheatley's granddaughter, Kristen, who is expecting and had some blood pressure problems recently and is scheduled for a C-section on the 23rd of this month. Let's keep praying for Matt and Michaela Perkins as they're trying to start their family. Uh, Tara Vaughn has just requested prayer for her boss's grandbaby. He's three months old and has never been able to leave the hospital since his birth. They were hoping that he would be able to come home next week, and now they've learned that he's going to have to have bowel resection surgery. So let's keep that child and the family in our prayers today. Let's keep praying for our economy, for God's will to be done in the upcoming presidential election and in every race, whether it be on the local level or all the way up uh, through Congress and, of course, the presidential tickets. Let's believe God for his will to be done. Um, we need to pray for Ben Ramey, for Tasha Ray, and for Adam Ray, who are all needing a negative COVID test so that they can be cleared to return to work. Adam also has some health issues that the doctors have not been able to figure out, so we want to keep that in mind today. The Stoddard County Health Department has confirmed 16 new cases of COVID-19 yesterday afternoon. We currently have 133 active cases, and we're going to claim victory over all of those this morning. Bishop Paul Mooney of Indianapolis, Indiana, is suffering from COVID-19. Let's pray for him as well as for these others who are in different stages of recovery right now. Billy and Penny Hudson, Brother Stan Cook and his wife Cheryl, Sister Martha Lewis, Susan Bright, Velan Marshall, Robert uh, Pam Bunch and her family, Haley and Rand, Pastor Vic Votal, Sally Waller's grandson, Colin, Brother Kevin Prince, Mike Carter, Pastor Stan Gleason and his wife, Marlene, Lisa Breedlove, Curtis Tucker, Brother Garner, uh, that's uh, Larry Carter's father-in-law, uh, Brent Hill's sister and father, Pastor Mitchell Bland, our president and first lady, and all those in the administration and Congress who are currently battling COVID and so good to uh, know that our president has been able, been able to uh, be out of the hospital and is doing so much better. Let's keep praying for all of these who are 
affected at the moment with COVID-19. Any one of us who have been through that can testify that it's not, uh, it's not to be taken lightly, but we are thankful to see the cases becoming milder uh, by and large and less and less people have to be hospitalized with the virus. We give God all the praise and the glory for every advancement in treatment and for his touch uh, supernaturally in so many of these situations. Amen. Let's look uh, at other needs today. Of course, we want to continue praying for those in the nursing homes and those who are shut into their homes and isolated from uh, contact with their family and friends that God would encourage and strengthen them. Let's pray for Brother and Sister Perkins today, our dear elders uh, who uh, are so isolated and just need encouragement and strength today uh, and also a healing touch. Let's pray for the kids at school, the teachers, the bus drivers, the staff members that are working there with them for their protection and help during this time. Uh, physical needs today of, of, other, of other types, Britt Moore has back issues and needs a healing touch. Debbie Biddick uh, fractured her leg and, and needs a speedy recovery from that, and she also needs prayers for direction. Cheryl Lachance has some health issues that she desires our prayers for. Debbie, uh, a request submitted by Carmen, a lady named Debbie who's recovering from a double stroke. Uh, Janae's mom is battling pneumonia, stemming from a COVID diagnosis. Luke Havens in the country of Latvia is still very ill with flu-like symptoms. My uncle Leslie Pride needs healing today. Robbie Northrup needs healing of COPD, as does Kendra. Bill Eldreth needs healing of several health problems, including myasthenia gravis. James Pearson is dealing with high blood pressure. Renee has hip and knee issues. Abel Ray needs a miracle uh, to recover from an incurable disease called PKU, in which he cannot take in protein. Michael Parrott needs healing of Crohn's disease. Uh, Parkinson's disease is that continual battle that my father and mother-in-law are both waging, as well as Russ and Tim Workman. Tim also has diabetes. We want to pray for his healing of that today. Uh, Terry Adams needs healing of IBS. Her grandson, Ethan, needs a healing touch. Rue needs healing of his body today as he deals with uh, many issues with organ transplants. Rick House has type 2 diabetes and a heart murmur. Phyllis Robinette has macular degeneration. We want to continue praying for missionary Robin Schutz's father, who needs a heart transplant. My Aunt Emily needs a healing of diabetes. Phil and Karen Sampson and their family are believing for healing for Caton and for God to move in their family issues. We have so many who are battling with cancer today. We want to keep praying for them. Delbert Bryant, Diane Escher, Dwayne Lewis, Terry Adams' friend, Ari Bowers, Robert Wicks, Kim Stinson, Wanda Barnes, Lorelei, Caden, Jenna, and Tucker, Kim Gladden, Josh Soberg, Michael Boland, Evelyn Marshall, Jamie Dixon, Terry's friend Beverly, Brother Steve Williford, Brother Anthony Trimble, Lisa Workman, Versi Gibbs, Linda Fox, and David Harris. And we continue to pray for full recovery for Tammy Lawson, for Karen Pratt's mother, for Ethan Harville, for Pastor Scott Armstrong, Rob Durr, Leslie Cooper, Nick Searcy, Brandy Bryant, Cody Robinette, Donna Reedy, uh, Brantley, Johnny Ray Hagee, Sylvia Laramore's daughter, and Gerald Yeely. And so many of these situations stemming from uh, automobile accidents, work-related injuries, uh, stroke surgeries, and uh, we believe that all of these that are on the path of recovery are going to recover completely. And We give God the praise in advance for all that he's doing. God bless you this morning, and thank you for being a part of this specific prayer group this morning. So many other prayer groups, of course, that are going on around the nation. We thank God for every group that's binding together in prayer, and this is something that I just felt to do back at the beginning of the pandemic, and we're still going strong. And I'm so thankful that you're a part of this because 
or you're the reason why uh, that it is a success. We've been talking from Galatians chapter 6, verse 1 and 2, which says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, verse 2 says, and so fulfill the law of Christ. We've revealed in these first couple of devotions what the law of Christ is. It's very clearly stated to us in the Word of God. The law of Christ is love. For Paul said in the book of Romans that we are to owe no one anything but to love one another because he that loves uh, loveth another hath fulfilled the law. And he went on to say that love is the fulfilling of the law in that all the commandments, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, and so on and so on and so forth. All of those thou shalt nots are held up by this great thou shalt. Thou shalt love the Lord with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. If we will do that, then we will fulfill the complete law, amen, through the love of God that is being shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Of course, Jesus Christ did not ask us to do something that he was not willing to do himself. The Bible tells us that uh, he made, of him, made himself of no reputation, and he went to Calvary and took our sins upon himself to deliver us and to redeem us from the hand of the enemy that had us in bondage. Jesus Christ was born into a world in that little town of Bethlehem that was overtaken in fault. The nation of Israel had backslidden and turned to worship idols time and again. They had killed many of the prophets that God had sent to help them. And things were so bad at the time of Christ's birth that Israel had not even heard a word from the Lord for several hundred years. But with the world in this terrible condition, amen, as the word tells us, um, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Understand that God, God Almighty, the very essence of the spiritual realm, robed himself in flesh and came to dwell among mortal men for the sole purpose of restoring us back into fellowship with him and he did it all as the scripture encourages us to do in Galatians 6 and 1 he did it in the spirit of meekness the word of God tells us that he was brought as a lamb to the slaughter yet he opened not his mouth I want to talk to you for a moment this morning about the important message of restoration and reconciliation the Bible tells us that we the church have been given the ministry of reconciliation. It is up to us to make sure the door is open and that people can be restored to God in these last days. You know, I don't have really uh, the, the time of day for people who don't believe in the message of restoration. I have very little respect for people who proclaim restoration but refuse to practice it. You know, there are a lot of people who like to talk about restoration. I'm talking about in the church community, but they don't have the courage to implement it because of what people may think about them or say about them. But the example that Jesus gave us was that he made of himself no reputation, but he went to the cross for us. And we ought to be willing to lay down our lives, to lay down our reputation, to lay down our desires for one another. If we claim to be preaching the gospel, but we do not practice restoration, we are missing the whole point and the purpose of the gospel in the first place. You know, I've noticed a double standard many times among us uh, in many people's attitudes toward restoration. To many, it doesn't matter what type of sin someone has committed as long as they did that before they came to the Lord, as long as they weren't, in some people's words, claiming to be anything. But, you know, this attitude that we have sometimes towards someone who commits a big sin while they're an active part of the church, many times our attitude 
uh, toward restoration is completely different than it is toward that one who wasn't claiming to be anything. Let me tell you, sometimes when we're doing our best, we still stumble and we still fall short of the mark even after we are walking with the Lord. And for us to have that attitude that we would uh, shun someone or not um, uh, not want to help them to get back where they need to be because uh, we feel like they should have known better or whatever that our excuse is in our treatment of that person. I don't know exactly why I'm saying this this morning, uh, but I feel to say it. Uh, we need to understand that's not consistent with God's attitude toward us. You know, God created man in a sinless, perfect state. Adam and Eve were not born in sin and shaping and iniquity like we were. And guess what? They still messed up. But did God just throw them away? No. God set forth a plan from the very beginning, from the very foundation of the world in the mind of God, the Lamb was already slain. Amen. It was going to be done in the fullness of time. Why? Because of his love for us. And Jesus Christ went to Calvary so that we could be restored. Amen. I'm so thankful for the mercy and the grace of God. And I pray that someone today that needs restoration will hear this devotion and understand that the church has open arms and we're ready to receive you. Amen. Because our God is ready to receive you. He's given us the ministry of reconciliation and we want to make sure that we are ready and willing to do his will. Amen. For you today to help you to get back to where that you need to be. That's why today I felt to put our spiritual needs at the top of the list. We believe that God is a God of restoration and he's going to move in every life today. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this time that we can come before your throne. Lord, we're none worthy to be here, but you have made us worthy by your precious blood. Hallelujah. We give you thanks today. We worship you as the mighty God you are and the loving Savior that you are. Oh, you are kind toward us and you're long-suffering toward us. And we thank you for your great faithfulness. We pray today, God, for everyone in our families, these names that are on this list today that I've already called out in front of this prayer group. We pray, God, for deliverance, for healing of wounded spirits. Oh, God, for healing of backslidings today. Move in our families, Lord. Move among our friends and neighbors and those who are lost today that we come in contact with. I pray, God, you would help us to understand our part in this plan of restoration as we are your hands and your feet in this earth today. Help us, God, to follow your example and to restore in a spirit of meekness, considering our own lives and considering ourselves, lest we would fall into the same temptation. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord, for your touch. We believe, God, for your help today for those who are struggling uh, mentally right now. Lord, we don't look down on those today that are struggling with their mental health. Uh, we don't look at them and just say that's a person that's that's nuts or crazy. No, Lord, we understand that the pressures of life are coming down upon all of us. Uh, and there go us, uh, uh, except for your grace that's being manifested in our lives. Uh, and we pray for your grace and your truth to shine forth. Um, Lord, for perfect love to cast out all fear today in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, for the physical needs that have been brought to our attention. Lord, for these new requests today, for Shirley. Lord, for healing of her kidneys. We pray for these who have lost a loved one this week, Lord, so tragically. We pray, God, for Chris's co-worker, Judy, that you would comfort her heart in the loss of her mother. We pray for the family of Pastor uh, Kenny Comstock and his wife who, who died so horribly in this car accident. Be with their children, Lord. Comfort their hearts. Uh, Lord, be with their caregivers, Lord. In Jesus' name, be with that church family, God, and strengthen them today. We pray for these ladies, Lord, who are getting ready to deliver children in the coming months. We pray, God, for Sally's daughters, that you would be with them throughout their pregnancies, uh, that those children would be born healthy, and, Lord, that the mother's uh, 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 
health would be in good condition throughout in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, for Kristen today. Lord, as she goes in for that C-section here in just a matter of days, we pray, God, that all would go well. We pray for Matt and Michaela, Lord, that you would bless them with the child that they desire. In Jesus' name, we pray for Tara's boss's grandbaby, Lord, this situation where this child at three months of age has never been able to be discharged from the hospital and now is facing a major surgery. We pray for your hand to be upon the surgeons, God. We pray, Lord, that you would guide them. We pray for this child and for this family, Lord, that he would recover fully and be able to to return home and live a normal and, and wonderful life. We pray, God, for your will to be done in our economy. You see the situation with so many who are under who are underemployed and unemployed, and we believe, God, for you to make the difference um, in this situation. Lord, heal our land as we humble ourselves before you and trust in you today. We pray for your will to be done in our election. God, guide this nation. Guide the voting, Lord. Direct this nation, God, and let righteousness prevail. In Jesus' name, we pray for all the COVID-19 situations that are ongoing. We pray for every area where there's been an uptick in cases, uh, Lord, that it would be brought under control. In Jesus' name, we pray for every case to be milder than the last. We pray for Ben and for Tasha and for Adam, Lord, that they would be able to get a negative test. Uh, Lord, they've already been cleared from quarantine by the health department but we trust that they would get that negative test result so that they could return to work, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray for every COVID-19 request. We pray, God, against every active case in our county, against every new case, Lord, believing for quick and full recoveries. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, each and every one of these uh, that we've called today before this prayer group, uh, Lord, we believe you, God, to move in their lives today for Bishop Paul Mooney, Lord, uh, who's suffering with COVID today, for our other pastors, Lord, that are dealing with it in their congregations. Uh, we pray, God, for full recovery. Let every church be able to reopen safely, God. Let every community, God, be able to continue on um, and begin to operate at full capacity. In Jesus' name, we curse this virus. We take dominion and authority over it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And we believe you, God. Lord, from the highest office to the lowest, Lord, of all of us here just living our lives every day, God, without position, without notoriety. Lord, we know this virus is no respecter of persons, but Lord, you do not have respect of persons either. And just as you're concerned about our president and first lady, you're concerned about those uh, here in our own communities. Uh, and we believe you for their healing today. We believe you to help those who are in the nursing homes, those who are shut into their homes today, that you would comfort and strengthen them. Touch brother and sister Perkins this morning, God. Comfort and strengthen them and minister your continued healing touch to them. We pray, Lord, for every child at school, God, that you would uh, help them today, Lord, that you would help them to catch up from all the lost time, Lord, that they've not been in school. For the kids who have been in quarantine and now are struggling, Lord, as they return to school to catch back up on their schoolwork, Lord, and to excel. We pray, God, you would touch their minds today and protect, Lord, our teachers and our bus drivers and our staff members, Lord, that are working with the students in Jesus' name. We pray for every physical need, for Britt, that you would touch his back today. For Debbie, Lord, that she would recover quickly from this fracture of her leg. We pray for direction in her life. We pray for Cheryl today, Lord, for healing of her health issues. We pray for Debbie, who's recovering from stroke right now. For Janae, mom, Lord, who's battling with pneumonia. We pray for Luke Havens, God, that you would touch his body today. For Leslie Pride and for Robbie Northrup, for Kendra and for Bill Eldreth and for James Pearson, for Renee and for Abel 
people today, God, for Michael Parrott, uh, for my father and mother-in-law, and for Russ and for Tim, Lord, as they battle with Parkinson's, and as Tim battles with diabetes, we believe for their healing today. We pray for Terry Adams, Lord, for healing touch. We pray for Ethan, God, that you would touch his body. Lord, you see Rue Bublitz today, God, touch him and move in his life and minister healing to him right now. We pray for Rick House, Lord, that you would touch his heart. And Lord, let his blood sugar stabilize today. We pray for Phyllis Robinette for healing of her eyes. For missionary Robin Shute's father, God, that you would guide the doctors, Lord, as they are trying trying to find a way to do a heart transplant for him. Let there be a donor, God, that they can find the right blood type of, in Jesus' name. We pray for my Aunt Emily today. Minister healing to her body. We pray for Phil and Karen Sampson, Lord, as she would touch their family today. Touch Caitlin, God. Move in their needs, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you the glory. We praise you, God, for healing cancer today. You took stripes, Lord, for our healing. There's nothing that's too hard for you. We lift up Delbert and Diane, Dwayne and Terry's friend today, Ari Bowers, Robert Wicks, Kim Stinson, Wanda Barnes, Lorelei Caden, Jenna and Tucker, Kim Gladden, Josh Soberg, Michael Boland, Evelyn Marshall, Jamie Dixon, Terry's friend Beverly, Brother Williford and Brother Anthony Trimble, Lisa Workman and Versi Gibbs, Linda Fox and David Harris. We give you praise today, Lord, for healing them, uh, hallelujah, of these uh, dreaded diseases today. We give you the thanks. Uh, we believe for continued recovery, Lord, for these recovering from surgery and car accidents um, and stroke, Lord, uh, and work-related accidents. Uh, hallelujah. We believe you, God, for full recovery for every one that's going through rehab and therapy right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you the praise, Lord, for what you're doing today. For you alone can do these works, uh, and we give you praise for it. Uh, we honor your name. We glorify your name. We recognize, Lord, uh, that it's your ability and not ours. Uh, hallelujah. We depend upon you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for hearing our prayers. Go with us today, God, throughout this day. Be with your people, Lord. Guide us. Help us to be sensitive, Lord, to the moving of your spirit in our lives that we can share the great ministry that you've given to us of healing, of restoration, of deliverance, of reconciliation for all those, Lord, who are bound, for those who are oppressed, for those that need healing today. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray these things. And everybody ought to say amen. God bless you, and thank you for being a part of prayer ministry once again today. I'll see you tomorrow morning again at 7.30 a.m. as we continue our study of fulfilling the law of Christ. God bless you.